Ju uh, tuning in again to the Guitar Journal. This month is going to be a little bit more, uh, you may have guessed it, hybrid picking, this time in the context of doing some lead stuff. Um, for those of you who want to know more about it, um, I'm going to break down some of the licks I did over the chord changes here um, in this, so you can kind of, uh, I want to talk about what notes to approach when you're uh, changing chords. It helps lines sound more solid when you're playing lead stuff. And for those of you who are, who are here for the usual hybrid picking fun, um, we're going to start off doing this lick here. All right, that's the one that uh, led from the one chord into the four chord the first time around there. And uh, that's a whole lot of fun. You can grab tabs for it um, following the link under the video. I'm just going to go over it slowly now, just talking about the picking a little bit, all right? Um, now, if this doesn't interest you and you're interested in the other part where I'll go over playing through the chords a little bit, then just look for the time marker underneath, all right? Here we go. This is uh, based on just what I was trying to work up as a pentatonic sequence um, using hybrid picking. Right? You'd normally pick it like that. Or here. Okay, and in this case, I was going... So the next string, middle finger, gives it a nice twangy sound. I'm going to turn down the volume here. I got a fuzz pedal on, actually. Switch back to the pickup I had. All right, so it gets a little more twang that way. All right, that's the first little phrase of it. Ah, sorry, I'm messing that up. Okay, this is one of those things that becomes second nature after you practice it enough, and if you do it slow, you mess it up. Okay, so a lot of open strings happening. All right, and then going up to the third, really, of uh, uh, a major here. sliding down in this case getting into the F sharp the third of the uh, of the four chord which is D all right so let me just do it all the way through okay so that was in the beginning there leading from the one chord to the four chord uh, I'll do it a tempo So check out the tabs and work through that one really slow and watch your uh, fingering. Try to alternate pick between pick and fingers as much as you can. All right. All right, hope you dig that lick. Um, if, if that's something you dig, then check out my other videos for sure. There's a whole bunch more like that. For the next section here, I want to talk about um, using the major third, really, uh, in, in the most blah, blah. All right, in the second half, I want to talk about using the major third as your guide tone to follow chord changes, all right? Now we're here in the key of A. Moving to D. And that's gonna move then back to A. And of course down to E. So those are, those are your chords that you have available. Now, thinking about the important notes then for those chords. Over A, your important note is going to be a C sharp, and that's going to be here, all right? You can also get it up here. Okay, there's a few locations, but let's, let's work on like these two here. Okay. So if you're playing over A chord, doing some kind of riffing around on the notes you know. Okay, notice that you can hear already the chord motion to D when you start going up to that D note from the C sharp. It really sounds 
uh, like a clear motion. Now you want to get that sound in your lines. Uh, a moment ago doing that long sort of running lick that I had there, the thing that I aimed to do was get from the A and slide down to that F sharp. Now F sharp doesn't sound so great over the A chord. Alright. It's going to sound a little clunky. But over the D chord, it's really what you want. That's your third, okay? So that's another goal that you can get to going there. All right. Um, let's look at one more variation. You know, going from the C sharp up like that is cool. Let's uh, talk about moving from the seventh of A. Okay, over that the G. That's very close to getting to the F sharp. bunch of baloney notes there but then this motion right here okay and then you can hear the motion back to a like that okay so if these riffs are a little bit clunky I'm just sort of talking the theory here and not letting the music flow as much as it should but that's uh, enough to really hear where these are going was all then in this case something that fits over D and in this case a D major sound D dominant seven and then back to the C uh, back to the C sharp excuse me over the A okay I'll talk about those little riffs in a second let's go up here now over the D and look at another way of getting back to the A all right just out of the example I did at the beginning Okay, I'm trying to get that reflection so it's not right in your eyes. Um, coming after that lick here, I went up and just did a pretty typical sort of falling down D, uh, D major lick up here around this shape, okay? Okay, it was pretty much like that. Now, you know, when you play the tempo, you get it to flow a little better. But there's your notes, you know, you're all around this D shape right here. Okay, again, aiming between the D and the C, which fit over D very well, and getting back to that C sharp. Okay, so these are the things that really give the line good resolution. All right. Now to continue to talk about where you can go with stuff. Here was a cool lick. All right, over A, when that A comes back. All right, that's a pretty typical kind of country lick here. And so here you have your, your root, high A, and then third below it. And when you move those down, you move them down a whole step by moving in half steps. And you wind up on, from the root down to the dominant seventh of A. And the third moves down to the ninth. So you wind up kind of superimposing a ninth sound on top of the chord, which is very cool. That dominant ninth sound is, you know, going to give it that tension that you want to get. All right, and here I also added in the F sharp at the beginning over the A. Now, I said before that F sharp doesn't always fit that well, but in this case it gives it a very... That sixth sound, very country, almost like a lap steel kind of sound, pedal steel guitar sound. All right, and that winds up, as you move that F sharp down, you're gonna wind up on an E, all right? And this chord sketches out an E minor sound. Now that over, over the A chord actually works quite well because you're winding up with, the, down to the E to the G, and there's a B up here, E, G, and B. They work out to B over A, the, fifth, the seventh, and the B is the ninth, all right? So again, you have here that in there with the added little benefit of that. Now, the cool thing about doing this when you're about to move to the five chord here, the E chord, is that you just play D minor, and now you gotta play E major. Okay, so again, moving that E minor sound to an E major sound also clearly defines where the chord is and makes what you're playing sound solid and like like you know what you're doing. I try to sound like I know what I'm doing too. 
Okay, and then in this case, uh, coming up to D afterwards, just a, a long cascading D thing. <laughs> tumbling down the, the pentatonic scale over the D. Okay, and this here, that's the playing the, the third and the root over D. And doing that brings you down to the third C sharp over A and play the high A up there. Okay, and those, those wide contours of that line sound pretty cool. Now that's, uh, again, another good example of how getting to that third really makes that work, okay? Now you don't want to do that all the time because if you're just hammering on the third over every chord change, it can get a little bit boring. And in that case, you know, just playing some straight up, you know, licks that end on the root or something once in a while can bring some variety into that. So anyway, it's just another little footnote in the endless um, fun in playing lead guitar stuff. I hope that's helpful. Uh, be sure to give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my videos. And again, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time around.